Seeing as so many fun is that, uh, as you guys can see... You don't take it out to clean it. It's in no, place. No. You just brush it lightly. So, basically you just take this guy and just brush it. Just That's what he's bit. talking about. Yeah, if, if so. the tip's not clean, what happens is any residual plastic will A, catch other plastic, or B, char, and eventually become not a good thing because it makes the surface sticky and you want it smooth because this actually planes across and levels the plastic uh, when you do an a, uh, extrude and it leaves a beautiful finish when you have a clean tip. When you have a dirty tip, it don't look so good. So um, that's just something we learned. We also ran some other materials that we were trying to qualify this week and we have someone who definitely is disqualified. Yeah. Uh, it was an American manufacturer of all things who bragged they had the best. They do not have the best. Not even close. So um, we will post our results a little later on as far as who that is. We don't want to uh, ruin their reputation until we talk to them tomorrow. But we ordered stuff a week ago. It came in on Tuesday and we tried printing on Friday with it. The service and, was uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The service was phenomenal. Yeah. Plastic was not. Okay, let's see what the next guy says. Uh, do you know who the seven are? Seven guys that I'm going to go take uh, on my run. Yeah. I can't rattle them off for you, but I could tell you tomorrow if we Skyped in. I have to go look at the list. I know who a couple of the guys are. Uh, John, who was just here, I'm taking his system to him. Mm -hmm. um, I believe John Hubbard's one. Yes. I believe uh, he's, he's, he's very close. I mean, they're very yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. But who, who's the other guy that um, Joshua Demore? Yes, that's it, three guys. Uh, um, there, there's a uh, someone in Manhattan also. Yes, that's June Lee. Ju oh, yeah, June Lee. Can't forget you. Um, and then I don't know if if I think the one that's located way out next to the ocean in the tip of Virginia, I'm probably gonna end up shipping it because it's gonna take me a whole day just to go see that one guy. That would be uh, DB Nickerson. Oh, so and he's uh, on. So, yeah. but did he get an engine or a system? He got a system. So, I might reevaluate that. So let me check on that before I say one way or the other, yeah. Mr. DB Nickerson. Yeah. Um, um, uh, and actually, I know that you're going to want to do some precious metal clay or something like that. So maybe, uh, maybe I can find it in my route to get lost and end up on uh, out there in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so um, um, I don't know the other three guys off the tip of my tongue. There's so uh, we got to look. I don't, I don't want to say a name and get yeah. your hopes up and be wrong. Those guys yeah. I know for sure we are scheduled to see. And uh, oh, David Geico. David Geico. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was, it was, uh, couldn't forget him. Yeah, uh, New Jersey. Um, Otherwise, he'll change my DNA while I'm not looking. He'll make me talk funny, which I already do with Skype calls, but that's besides the point. <laughs> we have an anomaly on our camera. If it goes to sleep and then it comes back from sleep, it changes the, the quality. So we sound like the chipmunks. Yeah. So. Now, David, I want to see your lab. I don't care about Edison's lab. I want to see your lab. <laughs> Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, okay, and then, um, Valen says, uh, when you showed the back of the system, I noticed the yoke ribbon appears to come out of the back of the enclosure. Yeah, there's another cover that's not in place, mm -hmm. and uh, we were yes. arguing with whether we were going to put the filter back there or on the top of the lid. So we showed it to everybody where we've got it right now, and we're going to do some prints with it where it's at, and we're going to get the chamber up to 55 degrees C and see how things hold up. If that looks good, then we will probably leave it in the lid. If it doesn't, then we're going to have to engineer a rear compartment for it, uh, more than likely. And uh, again, that's an add-on. It's not something that um, will stop the shipments. It's a, We have one of two places it can go. It's a drop-on. It's a an add-on if you like. Um, you guys can buy these filters that we're using at Target of all places. Uh, I shopped all over the place for a small filter that seemed to have the right components and actually worked. 
and of all places to target carried this one filter along with all the rest of them they had and uh, it's just north of 50 about 57 dollars with tax here is what it was it wasn't not expensive you can get the filters there um, so anybody who's got another system at home that's watching it's not our printer but someone else's printer check it out because i mean target's got i was impressed with the quality of this that's the reason we went with it the filter is actually very well made. Much better than some of the $200 filters I was evaluating. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, and you can actually get the filters out. You know, or change out the filters. Yeah, this is not a high uh, CFM. But since it's in an enclosure, I think that you're going to be okay. We don't really want super high CFM or it'll move too much air over the build area. It does move some air. I mean, we've mounted it so that it recirculates. And, uh, well, we'll have to make some builds and show you guys how they come out. And James E. Ballon, thank you very much for, for asking that question because that answers the question for Kir Kirpa, who was uh, emailing me a little bit earlier uh, this weekend. I wasn't able to get to it until now. Um, that's one of the last little pieces that we have to figure out before we figure out how to actually get this guy in a box, and then I can give you all the dimensions. He's 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 over in India. Yeah, I know. And and he he's, he's trying to go through his logistics company in order to, to figure out how to get this to, to ship over to him. So I'm. I prepared with for him all of the uh, dimensions, all the you know package dimensions, so that he can, uh, can price it out his way. And we're going to determine if his carrier can do a cheaper. Um, yeah, I understand. International shipment is not as much fun as they claim. No. So. <laughs> so, and if you guys have someone who you like to use, um, meaning if you're an if you're if any of the workers who are watching this, if you guys are international. And you have any kind of questions as to how you get a ship? If you have a preferred shipper, we'll go that route, um, and we're willing to work with you guys on that. So when this ships, the bubble is flipped around and <laughs> it fits inside the top, and uh, the top cover and the side cover go in underneath the base, and they're protected there during shipment, mm -hmm. where the piece of uh, particle board is currently pulled out for our keyboard. Yep. Um, so. And the material tree, uh, the material holder, or that has the rods on it for holding the material, it actually has screws, so we undo that, and those two bars that are for the material holding, they are removed. But otherwise, it's not too tough for you to put the system um, together. I mean, it's going to be 30 minutes to an hour to unpack it and set it up. It should be. All right, whose system is the one... We are looking, looking at, at this is John Richardson, mm -hmm. known as Pro E Guy, yeah. and uh, I have Les Musics sitting in the next it's room. Yeah, I have Ken's back, back there over here, yeah. uh, and we have uh, still got. I'm embarrassed to say, but it's true. Greg's system here, oh, yeah. um, which uh, I think almost all of those go out this. Uh, I know Les's should go this week. I know yep. John's should be ready to go on the tour. Mm -hmm. And I know we're sending out uh, Greg's to him. We need space. Can. I can't yeah. build more until I get more space. I mean, we're if you look more around, more. we just have a little few printers lined up here. Yeah. And we have 18 more on the floor in the next room. So, yeah, we, we kind of like to get these out the door as much as you like to get them. So, let's see what we've got. Stuff expands to fill all horizontal space. Uh, yeah, Murphy's <laughs> Law of, of Manufacturing. Yeah. When is too much space possible? If you still have a flat surface. No, when you, you pay rent by the square space. foot, that's <laughs> when too much space is possible. <laughs> so. Uh, so. All right. Well, um, tomorrow night, I believe it's X Ray Charlie and me. Yeah. And Tuesday night's less. Mm -hmm. And Tuesday night after that, I'm Skyping in with somebody who's got a system in Australia, or is getting yes. to university. Yep. And um, Wednesday, I have to go look at the calendar, but I know I've got someone on Wednesday as well. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and Thursday, I have Harold. Yes. Yes. From the Christian Unity. U Unity Christian High yeah. School. Thank you guys for being so patient with us. Um, but you guys, I, I enjoyed. We, 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 I've seen this guy. This we guy talked last together. week by Skype. It yeah. worked great, and uh, oh. we went through. I did some screen sharing. I walked them through the software. I walked them through some initial slicer settings. Um, you guys, 
when you get your printers, the slicing is by far the biggest challenge. Uh, if you're lucky enough to slice with one of our recipes and yeah. you get a good slice right off the bat, then you're blessed. But there are nuances to slicing to get the real quality of mechanical properties and um, buildability. I mean, really. So we've been playing with, uh, oh, what's the right word? This is the slicer, are you talking about the, uh, the controls? Now, we've been playing with the fill ratios, 25%, 35%, 40%. Uh, I went as high as 80% to see how it affects the shrink rate and how much it pulls up in the corners. And it's very interesting. So uh, just, just, just know that there's, there's a, little, a little bit of art, artistry done in knowing this kind of part will print with this formula or this recipe better. Um, we, we implemented some post-processing already and there'll be a lot more post-processing capability that we'll add regularly. Um, someone's asking, is the West Coast trip still planned for the next four to eight weeks? The uh, answer constant. is absolutely, yeah. without sure. question. Um, that's gonna be, yeah, that's I gonna believe be it's going to be three weeks from now, but uh, that's me saying that. No. If this week goes at all as according to plan, then it will be three weeks from now. If it doesn't go according to plan, then call me up and I'll tell you what's going on and I can, I can give you a better thing. I've got two trips to the West Coast and we have something going on in the background here that uh, those that visit us know about or those that are really personally close to us know about, but it's uh, affecting my travel plans just a skosh. So um, bear with us. It's a little bit something going on with my, my oldest son and we're trying to work around his needs. and. Uh, Yes, that's the next cost of, Yeah, uh, I assume that will include me. Yeah, of course. Yes. I can hit all of L.A. in one trip. That's, that's a lot. You're telling me, but I, I know the barrio real well, so. I know, but that's, what is it, is that, I think we're up to 12? No. 10, 10, 10 or 12 printers, yeah. It's, I'll be making it's, two it's trips. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I got to look at that. Yeah, it's. I take that back. Lot, I'll be making guys. two trips. <laughs> so. Uh, James C. Valen says, uh, this one is looking awesome. Thank you. Uh, can we see some of the prints you showed earlier in the broadcast? Uh, do you think uh, I can uh, easily pull, uh, pull, out, pull the material from the head and store the material, say, in a Ziploc bag? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. Ab it yeah. takes one minute, one minute, less than that, 30 seconds to pull the material out. Well, heck, we can... I'll I don't have it hot right now. Do you want to turn it on? We, we could, but the secret to it is you heat up the head and pull out the material when the head's hot. Mm -hmm. Just spool it right up and stick it in a baggie. We've done it enough times. Yeah. Oops, sorry. So, yeah, um, the, the process is incredibly simple, and if you do it right, and which is simple and easy... Thanks, John. Oh, yeah, thank we'll you, John. We look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> All right. If you pull it out the way that, that, that uh, we'll go through the process, the actual material that's left over is inside of this part of the actual Just on the shooter. tip. And that's what you really truly really want. So, and that was one of the things that we had a, we had a problem with with one of the earlier designs uh, and with some of the other extruders that are out there is because the material would just travel up this particular pipe and just get clogged up. And a lot of other people are having that, that same problem. Same All right. Issue. Just to be clear, when you remove the material, if it's hot, yeah. this last... 10 millimeters, 8 to 10 millimeters is the only part that's even remotely hot. Yeah. That's right in this zone right here. Mm -hmm. uh, right there. Okay. When you take and pull the material out while it's hot, it actually cuts right there and leaves between 3 and 5 millimeters of actual plastic on the tip. The rest of this is cleared off. If you pull it out or try to pull it out when it's cold, it breaks further up and sometimes breaks where the hob shaft is because that's the narrowest point in this long uh, Two. Two. Uh, okay. chain of, of material, whatever you want to call it, in, okay. in, the, in the material. So that's where it's weakest. Well, if you break it at the hob shaft, it's a nightmare for me to push it because it doesn't have an alignment. You can't, you're going around a, a circle and you're trying to make two items 
join into each other yeah. and they're not they're going to slip like that and then it won't push it whereas when it, if you break it at the tip it goes around the hob shaft and goes out the exhaust pipe right into the fusion chamber yeah. so that's the reason why we tell everybody if it's cold pull the pull up the uh you just push down on the knob here you pull up pull on the pfa tube, tube. Yeah. get a pair of wire cutters just clip with about two to three inches of material. That way, when you heat this up, you got something to just walk it right out with. Mm -hmm. If you cut it short, you got nothing to work with. Now, you can use the little switch to run the hob motor, yeah. but I always like to have a little bit to hold on to. That works great for us. It's worked every time, mm -hmm. delightfully so, and we've been able to change between the Golden 3. We've been able to change between ABS, nylon, and PLA. And PLA. And uh, without, without pretty much, issue. yeah, without, no, I mean, it's been less than uh, two minutes to swap between materials in it, all these cases, so. 9 was a little explosive at first until we realized that it was, we were running it too hot. You know, if you remember, it was outgassing a lot. Yeah, but that so. has nothing to do with changing it. <laughs> no. Of course, you change the temperature appropriately. Yeah. We didn't have any experience with nylon. We thought it had to be up at 240, 250. It runs great at 215, 220. Yeah. Uh, off of our scale and I believe we're about three to five degrees cool uh, on our RTDs. And that's the Talman, the Talman. Yeah, the only Talman. We don't use anybody else's so yeah. far. Yeah, again, I cannot re reiterate this enough. Do not take weed whacker line <laughs> and think that you're going to print with it, okay? You will it, get whacked. It does give off HCN, which is hydrogen cyanide. It's not good stuff, okay? I die. Not good stuff. So don't so the the type of film that you're going to be using does matter. Yeah. Um, and that goes for any 3D printer that's out there, not just ours. Um, okay. So um, I guess I mean the little desiccant packs. Uh, you can you can, we 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 suggest that if you're going to be storing the material inside of a bag, get some desiccant packs and throw them in there yeah, so yeah, that yeah. it keeps it nice and dry. Um, because that you know some some of these types of materials they do soak up the humidity. They really truly really do. Uh, nylon especially. Yeah. yeah, make no mistake, the nylon has to be kept dry. The ABS, it turns out, isn't quite as sensitive to the moisture being absorbed. It is very sensitive to moisture humidity during the print as far as how well it adheres to the yeah. bed. And it really is sensitive to how much you drive it into your surface. Um, there, is, there is some really interesting um, parameters that need to be defined and uh, metricized. They need to be uh, pulled out. We need a, a, a material, an RMS finish, yeah. a certain amount of distortion, i.e. height, the width ratio, uh, temperature, uh, so that we can say this temperature, this temperature, this temperature. I've seen a few very good efforts online, but not totally comprehensive because the RMS, i.e. The, the, the surface finish, is never appropriately uh, parameterized yeah. to tell us that was a number two dairy finish, it's a 32 RMS, it's uh, something like that so that you can go and know how rough the surface is because texture makes a difference when you're talking about how well it adheres to the surface. So. Um, we're hoping to get a graduate student or an undergraduate student who's looking for a nice project because this would be a dynamite uh, senior project for a uh, graduate uh, undergraduate student for mechanical engineering just to go through and show how the different parameters uh, affect buildability because it's across the industry everybody has the same problem if you can't stick you can't print yep it's pretty much the way it works Here's a print. Um, Here's a print that uh, another one. Hutch seems to be liking making these, so he makes lots of them. And the problem with this is uh, we still have to start stop. So let me see. You guys can yeah, see the hairs on go. it. So uh, we have to trim those hairs off. Next Ooh. next week, if the start stop is working, I'm going to show you the same exact part, and it should look like this one mm -hmm. right off the printer where it has no hairs. Obviously, we clean this one up. Just a little exacto knife action. Yeah, yeah. but uh, I think if you'll take a good look, come on. One, two, three. There you go. There you go. You can see that it's coming out 
quite nicely. Yeah, actually. pretty good. I do not. Okay. You have to get it the sooner, and then, then it, yeah. So we're fairly pleased uh, that it's kind of printing. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, and yeah. Orion, thank you very much for that. He said polycarb and laywood, uh, laywood, uh, like laywood D, I think is, absolutely needs to be dry. Polycarb will pop like crazy when printing if it is left exposed. And the cost, I, I skipped over you just for a second because, yes, we have the tea, gla tea glass or tea glaze. So this is PET, and this is stuff that's uh, available at Talon. So there, there's a nice little plug for. Uh, for, for Talon plastics, and we'll be trying this stuff this stuff out soon. So, but yes, plastic um, baggie, holding it in just fine. I'll print this week with it. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if you want to do a Skype session, give me a call, and I'll print it for you online. I'll we, we'll pull it up, and I'll give you a little preview of the printer for you, because I believe you're you're in the queue. Uh, not this week, but you're out like number eight, nine, or ten. So we'll be doing something the next two weeks together anyway. Yeah. So. I would love to do it. Um, and to answer uh, JMC Ballon, uh, I know you wanted to take a look at, at some of the other uh, some of the other prints. Uh, let me do that one more time. Wait a minute. If this is uh, what I think it is, you got a hot. Is the head heating up? Uh, no, but uh, we can change that, can't we? Yeah, we can. So can you move the stuff. What, what stuff temperature does he do the tea glass at? I think it's around 225. I, isn't think, it? I think you're right. Yeah. So uh, just a couple of the individual builds. This was the Kickstarter part that people have asked, have asked about. You guys would recognize this guy. This was the one that started off the whole, whole 100 micron thing. Uh, we haven't really changed much of anything to it, uh, except just to remove the raft that was underneath it. Um, yes, we can pair it with black. Thank you very much, uh, DeCosted, uh, for giving your feedback on this guy. Oh, you know what? We didn't show the... Uh huh. We got something else we showed? Um, Printed a couple of gears. These guys do mesh and work quite well. Oh, guys, this is this was PLA. We did earlier. Earlier, this guy. Well, for those people who have skyped in with us, this was the big big print that we did the other day that didn't quite make it because of a small little glitch. So, but it's all right. This was a start stop. As you guys can see right here, we started with one material which was yellow, um, and we stopped it, and we started printing with green. And we're able to actually print the green, there you go, uh, on top of the yellow. Did you show them the so. uh, black and the... Uh oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get to that in a second. We went through, um, all of these guys are, are, you know, I guess you could say um, they are uh, evolutionary type of designs, these guys. And I'll show that to you in a second. We printed the heck out of the green. Um, we went from design to design to design till we found something that we liked. Um, to give you somewhat of an idea, just for the material, and this is just for the material sensors, guys. Um, I mean, we you to see right here, um, which is actually kind of funny when you look at all these different prints that we've done. Um, just for the material sensor bracket and the evolution of it, we, we must have gone through. Oh man. 50, 60 prints, just so we would be able to create. You left up the best ones. Well, I no, I'm just showing the evolution of this because we did all of this in just a couple of days, um, which was wonderful. That was actually a nylon version, um, and uh, some of them we started, we stopped. Yeah, but, but really. He's got to show you the good ones. Yeah, these, this is what... what failed prints, semi-failed print, print, another oh. nice looking one that came out. We had a right hand and a left hand one. Oh, so guys, that, that red color just... This is where we sliced it wrong. There it goes. Sorry about go. that. Nice. All right, I'm taking the material out here. Come on over here. That we was a white balancing line. issue, so... Someone wants to know, so shine it right up here. All right. Oh, what happened to my... my uh, what happened to rip it here? Oh, I, sorry. Did you close it? Yeah. <laughs> Why? I, I, I apologize. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm gonna print. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> See, this is why everybody, this is why everybody needs their own printer. Then you can keep other people from playing with your printer. You know what I mean? So I think every family needs like 
one printer per child. All right, let's turn this back on. I have a shade. On. So, no, that yeah. was a good movie. Anyway. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it looks like it's good. Okay, so this is hot. According to this, 223 degrees. degrees. Okay. I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to walk it right out. You're done. That's all it takes to remove it. And now, since it's a 223, here, here, here. it's okay. I'm actually going to grab the uh, other material, the mystery material of the day. So that's what happened. So it cut itself off, and there you go. No, no problem at all. It okay. feeds right in. Let me go ahead and run this down a little bit. Well, Midnight Manufacturing Company, you're asking me if I'm calling myself a child. I, you know, we're all we're all children of, of some somebody. What it turned off? What would what, you do? I don't know. I hit something. Okay. It's power. Power it up. Interesting. It's weird. Uh, I wonder if I pitched something somewhere. Oh. Possibility, or if I blew my circuit, you got a blue light on there. Yeah, I do. Turn it off. All right, guys, hold on a second. Well, uh, keep talking to him. Okay. Tell him, tell him to home. Something happened. Anyway, okay. So now I can get back to, to what I was trying to explain before. So as you guys can see here, cover after cover after cover, individual pieces. Oh man, that white balancing, that auto white balancing is a is killer. Sorry, guys. So it goes all red and stuff. Anyway, so, and as you guys can see right here, we went through print after print, oops, print after print after print to finally come up with the correct stuff. So, um, some of these are failed prints, some of these guys actually, you know, this guy was a functional print. We destroyed it. Uh, this way was another, was another print that we actually did at the, uh, at the Turner Mini Maker Fair, and this guy actually does work. So it's just got a bunch of hairs there, so we can move that guy off. There we go. So, um, besides all this, some of you guys have sent us actual prints in, and we will be printing those particular prints. Uh, we just haven't gotten to them just as of yet, because we are getting on, you guys can see here, to, to work. Printed John's prints all weekend. Uh, yeah, that's true. We did print them all, all weekend, so. There's one print, the star. Well, one thing I did want to show you guys was actually on this on this print that you see in front of you, uh, for the actual material sensors that we were going that we put together, all on the cap for the for the spine. And it goes on top of the engine, and then you got the material sensor here. If you look very closely, let me move this guy right there. You see those threads that are right there? We didn't we did not print those. <laughs> Um, truthfully, these little threads that you see, you see right here, the plastic is strong enough, the ABS plastic is strong enough that if you want to use a tap, you can use a tap, tap into it, and put your own threads into the actual material. And it does hold, and it's extremely strong stuff. So, um, that's what we did with this guy here. So, these guys, I, you know, I, I can't get it out. Not without a wrench, a 10 millimeter wrench. So, and the way this guy fits is that this part right here goes into the system uh, system enclosure bracket. So you got a little screw that goes right there with a washer, which goes into the actual 8020. And this holds up the material, comes up and through, and then of course you got the connectors that go out into the, your uh, your main board, which lets you know if you got material in there or not. There's the switch. So, uh, there we go. Come on, refocus, refocus. There we go. So, material comes up through up through this guy, up here, and all the way straight through. So, it's just a simple switch. Nice. Okay. So you and Jay says, look at all those prints. Oh, are you still doing the dual color for the front cover on the Y arm? 
Uh, it's not the Y arm. It's actually the uh, the the X arm. And yes, yes, we are. Give me just one moment. I'm going to go into the other room while you guys can take a look at the prints. And I'm going to get the print that, that uh, was in question.